Today I'm going to show you another technique for adding highlights and shadows to your artwork that will allow you to add these highlights and shadows without having to sample any color. And you can move throughout your art piece adding various colors but never change from black and white as the colors on your brush. So let's get started and I'll demonstrate this for you today. So what I have here today is a little dinosaur that I've, I'm adding to a piece of artwork and um, we'll add those highlights and shadows to him. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a blank layer over the top and I'm going to clip that layer to the dinosaur. Oops, we got a duplicate layer. Um, and the key to this technique working is you must put this layer into the soft light blend mode. We're going to use a standard brush. Um, I like to use my single stroke brush, which has got kind of a, I'll zoom it in here so you can see it's a very weird edged brush. Um, but you can use just a, um, round brush, you can use a flat brush, you can use whatever brush you're comfortable painting highlights in with. Um, this is just a brush that I tend to use because I paint a lot of fur and, and organic material and the, uh, like flowers and things like that. And so this brush works well for me. So um, your color palette here, we want your color palette in black and white. So let's zoom in here and we'll take a look. Uh, black and white, if your colors are not currently at black and white, you can just hit this little icon um, and it will reset them to the defaults of black and white. So the key to this technique working is that the soft light blend mode takes white paint and I'm going to hit my X key here and so we can go into um, the white paint on the beginning palette. I'm going to have a brush. You can hit your B key to get your brush. When you're in the blend mode, Photoshop takes the white paint and blends it with the color underneath. So that's why we can paint like green and green and white will make just a lighter color of green. When we paint on brown, it'll make a lighter color of brown. If I paint with black on green, it'll make a darker color of green. If I paint with black on orange, it'll make a darker color of orange. And th that's why this technique allows you to add your shadows and highlights throughout your art piece without having to com constantly sample colors and try to figure out, oh, do I need a little bit lighter? Do I need a little bit darker? So you never really have to bring up this color picker and be working around your art piece going, oh, well, here's the color it was. Should I slide it a little bit to the left, Should a little bit to the right? And that's the color you're adding down here that you want to paint with. With this technique, you don't have to worry about that. You can just keep that black and white and never have to worry about opening up that color picker. So here's how it works. On the soft light, 100%, we can always adjust our opacity later. On my brush, now my brush, the best way to change the opacity on the brush, I know a lot of you probably come up here open this thing up, you slide your opacities back and forth, or some of you may have learned that you can scrubby this back and forth. I like shortcuts, I like hotkeys. The best way for me, once I'm on the brush, which I generally get to my brush with a B key, if I need the brush to be at 100% opacity, right? Oops. If I need the brush to be at 100% opacity, I can just hit the zero key and it will go to 100%, as you can see it did. 
If I need it to be at 40%, I hit the four key and it goes to 40%. If I want my brush to be at 60%, which is where I normally start my white highlights at 60%, I just hit the six key. I don't have to reach up to the toolbar. I don't have to scrubby the slider. I don't have to open the drop down. I just hit the six key and I'm at 60% and I'm ready to paint. So let's do some painting. I'm going to I'm going to go along the ridges here a little bit and you can see when I was over here I was getting some cream colors. If I'm doing this ridge here I'm also getting cream colors and a disadvantage for me of this brush is it tends to be a little wild and give me some really weird brush strokes. Um, but again it's got an organic edge on it and it tends to go crazy. I have to be fairly direct with it, but I like, I like the effect. So it's one, the one that I use. Now you see how white that is because I was painting with white on a fairly light gray, but when I'm up here and I'm painting on this orangish color, I get light orange. I paint here, I get yellow. I paint here, I get green because I'm blending the white with the underneath color. I'm not sampling any colors. I'm just letting Photoshop blend with the color that's underneath to create that highlight for me. And once I've got my highlights done, I can add a second layer name it shadows and go in and switch to black and do my shadows. I may just do them right on the same layer. It's up to you. If you like to keep your shadows and your highlights separate. The one thing I like to do though is on when I switch to my blacks, which I do that with the X key, switching my to my blacks on my palette, I like to go up here and hit the four key and change my opacity to 40% because the shadows are a little bit more saturated than the highlights. So again, you can see when I paint on green, I get a dark green. When I paint on orange, I get a dark orange. When I come down here and paint on these browns, I get nice rich browns and I'm just painting with black. Jump over here. I'm now getting greens, more greens. Now you see these weird strokes that I'm getting. There's another trick. The Tiddle key, the little key that's next to your one on your keyboard. If you hold that down, and you paint over those errant strokes, it puts your brush in the clear mode and it will become an eraser. And it just removes those weird strokes. And as soon as you let that key go, it returns to the brush and whatever you were doing before you toggled it down. So, it's a nice way so that you can clear up those weird brush strokes that you might have made without having to jump over to an eraser. There's another one. Again, it likes to do crazy things on me. That's enough for the demonstration. Let's take a look and see what we got. So we painted on this soft light layer with nothing but black and white. We never picked a color. And here's our results. Highlights and shadows. If it's a little too strong, now you can change your opacity down just a little. But that's the technique. Black and white on a soft light layer adds your highlights and shadows without changing color. Hope you enjoyed it.